My name is Claire Kittner. I am a physician assistant in the Demula Center for Cardiac Arrhythmias at Massachusetts General Hospital. You were referred to the Cardiac Arrhythmia Service because you have an abnormal heart rhythm. Very slow heart rates or problems with the natural wiring in your heart can prevent the top and bottom chambers of the heart from talking to each other. Oftentimes, this can be fixed with a pacemaker to prevent the heart rate from going too slow or to keep the top and bottom chambers of the heart beating in sync. Your doctor has determined that you will receive what is called a leadless pacemaker, which is placed directly into one of the bottom chambers of your heart. This is different than other types of pacemakers that are placed in the chest that have wires or leads. With a leadless pacemaker, you will spend one night in the hospital and will likely be discharged the day after your procedure. This video will outline the necessary steps you need to take before you come into the hospital for your scheduled device procedure, as well as what to expect before and after. First, lab testing and a chest x-ray should be completed within 30 days prior to your procedure. We prefer these to be completed at least one to two weeks prior to the procedure. This way, if there are any abnormalities, we have time to address them beforehand and repeat testing. These labs and imaging studies will be ordered by a provider to be completed at an MGB facility. One of our team members will call you before your procedure to outline all of the necessary steps to this testing. You will receive a call from one of our nurses the day before your procedure to specifically review medications to hold, what time to come into the hospital, and where to check in. Please note, if you use Patient Gateway, the time associated with your procedure may not be accurate. Additionally, if you have an allergy to contrast dye, you should notify your doctor before your procedure, as you may need to be pre-medicated to avoid a reaction. The day before your procedure, you will need to stop eating solid food as early as 10 p.m. You can only drink clear liquids up until one hour prior to arriving to the hospital. Clear liquids include Gatorade, Powerade, Pedialyte, apple juice, cranberry juice, grape juice, water, regular or diet soda, black coffee, or tea. Do not drink milk, cream, or non-dairy creamer. Your procedure could risk getting canceled if you have solid food or non-clear liquids in your system. If you are diabetic, drinking a clear liquid with sugar up until one hour before you arrive to the hospital is important to avoid low blood sugar. If you are on a blood thinner, such as a Pixaban or Eliquis, Rivaroxaban or Xeralto, or Dabigatrin or Prodaxa, you will be required to hold your evening dose the evening before your procedure and your morning dose the morning of the procedure to reduce the risk of bleeding. If you are on Warfarin or Coumadin, this can be continued without any missed doses. However, you should have an INR level checked once a week for three weeks prior to the procedure to ensure your levels have remained therapeutic. If you have your INRs checked at an outside facility, please bring in a printed copy of your INR levels when you present to the hospital for your procedure. After your procedure, our team may elect to have you hold additional doses of your blood thinner, depending on how your incision site looks. If you are taking canagliflozin or Invulcana, dapagliflozin or Farsiga, or empagliflozin or Jardiance, please hold three days before your scheduled procedure. If you are taking urticlifloxin or Stiglatro, it should be held four days prior to your procedure. If you are taking a GLP-1 agonist, such as semaglutide or Ozempic or Wagovi, Exanatide ER or Bidurion, Dulaglutide or Trulicity, Albaglutide or Tanzanium, or Terzapatide or Monjaro, it should be held for one week prior to your procedure. It is also important to notify your endocrinologist about the need for holding these medications one week prior to your procedure so they are aware. If your doctor has instructed you to hold any other medications prior to the procedure, please do so as well. Other medications that can interact with anesthesia are also typically held the morning of your procedure, like blood pressure medications, diuretics or water pills, and medications that affect your heart rate. If you need to hold any additional medications the morning of the procedure, our team will let you know when we call you the day before. On the morning of the procedure, when you arrive to the hospital, you will meet with your care team. Leadless device implant procedures are performed under general anesthesia, meaning you will be fully asleep during the procedure and you will require a breathing tube to support your airway. During these procedures, an anesthesiologist or CRNA will be next to you during the procedure to monitor your blood pressure, your heart rate, and your breathing pattern. You will meet with an anesthesiologist or CRNA beforehand to discuss your history. You will also meet with the physician performing your procedure, as well as the assisting fellow, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner. You will sign a formal consent form after discussing the risks of the procedure and meeting with your entire care team. 
The risks of a leadless pacemaker procedure are very rare, however, they are important to review. The procedure is done using thin tubes or catheters which are inserted through the vein in the right groin up into the heart. Possible complications can occur where these catheters are inserted, including injury or damage to the blood vessels, bleeding, or infection. Once inside the heart, the pacemaker will be threaded through the catheters to be placed in the bottom chamber and will be secured to the heart muscle. The device will then be tested to be sure it is functioning properly. The catheters and tubes will then be removed from the groin site and the small incision will be closed with a small absorbable suture. There is a risk of some pain or discomfort at the groin site, bleeding, infection, and swelling. Very rarely, the device could dislodge or fall out of place or damage the heart tissue. If this happens, you may require an additional procedure to fix the device. Additional procedural complications that can occur include stroke, heart attack, damage to the kidneys if contrast dye is used, and death in extremely rare cases. It is important to mention that each of these risks are very rare and your care team is well equipped to address any potential complication that may occur. You will be kept overnight for monitoring and likely discharged the following day. It is important to mention that under no circumstance can you drive yourself to the hospital for your procedure. You cannot drive for 48 hours after a leadless device implantation. Under certain circumstances, it is Massachusetts state law that you cannot drive for a full six months after your device implant if you have ever passed out and lost consciousness as a result of your abnormal heart rate. Regarding travel after your procedure, this will be up to your doctor based on your particular case. If you have planned to travel shortly after your procedure, please let your doctor know beforehand. Generally speaking, travel is permitted after a week or so as long as you can abide to activity restrictions, which will be reviewed with you. For seven to 10 days following your procedure, you cannot lift anything heavier than five to 10 pounds, and you must avoid repetitive motions that put pressure on the groins, such as biking, running, golfing, and swimming. A separate video discusses all of the restrictions you will need to follow after your procedure. You may be given a remote monitor with instructions on how to transmit data from the device quarterly or upon request. The instructions for how and when to send transmissions will be reviewed with you before you go home from your procedure. You will then have a follow-up visit with your doctor or their advanced practice provider in the office in 6 to 12 weeks. If you have any general questions, you may call the office at 617-724-4500 between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. or you can send a message through Patient Gateway. Please note, we do not check gateway messages overnight or on weekends.